welcome to Perception Media. I am your hostess, the Cine Geek, and today I'm going to be doing a 90s kid take on The Breakfast Club. So the first time I saw this movie, which came out in March uh, 1984, I was 12, um, going in between 6th to 7th grade. And this movie takes place in Shermer High School, Shermer, Illinois, which is a fictitious town where a lot of John Hughes films take place. And it centers on five students, a brain, an athlete, a basket case, a criminal, and an athlete, I'm sorry, and a princess, who are all in detention together on Saturday. And they're being watched over by their horrific principal, but I'll get into that. So what a 90s kid take on this is obviously I effing love this movie. I have a shirt of it and everything and I'm doing my best bender and I'll go ahead and be honest in high school I was not bender. I wanted to be bender. I was definitely Ali Sheedy's basket case. Um, so what I want to do is say that when you're watching a movie, sometimes it's hard to look at the movie without looking at it through the lens of your own time. And I was born in the early 90s and saw this movie in the early 2000s, like I'm sure most uh, people in my age cohort did. Um, looking at it, you know, 20 years after it was made, I gotta say, honestly, for the most part, it really, really holds up. It is a pretty iconic film for a great reason and um, some movies don't hold up so well but people still love them. This is a movie I don't think um, that's the case. There are a few things I have a problem with but okay we'll get into it. Um, so we'll start with the basket case because like I said that's kind of the character that I or the character that's kind of the person rather I was and I, the character I related to in high school the most and that's Ali Sheedy's character Allison. Um, the way that John Hughes set this up is actually really powerful. He starts with the kids arriving to detention, and from the get-go, you can see how they're all different. Allison is dropped off by her parents, and she's in the back seat, and she goes to say goodbye, but her parents drive off without even rolling their windows down to acknowledge her. Um, she is wearing all black, and she walks into the classroom, the very last, and she sits at the very back without saying anything. Next, we have um, Brian, who's played by Anthony Michael Hall back when he was still really skinny and dweeby looking. <laughs> and he is dropped off by his mother, and he's the character that is kind of narrating it because he ends up writing this paper that I'll get into in a second. And uh, his mother is very angry with him. He has a little sister in the back seat, and she tells him he needs to find a way to study, even though he says he's not allowed to do that during detention. And you can tell there's a lot of kind of animosity from her side. Then we have Claire, who is played by the impeccable Molly Ringwald, of course. And um, her father drops her off and she says, I don't really belong here. I'm not a defective because I skipped class to go shopping. And when she arrives into the class, she sits in the front and she even tells the principal that she doesn't think that she belongs there. Next we have Andrew, who's the athlete. And he's played by Emilio Estevez, and he is dropped off by his father, who tells him he needs, to, you know, no school is going to accept a discipline case, and that it's okay that, you know, what he did, it's fine, and we'll get into what he did and why it's in totally not fine. Um, but his dad's overlooking, like, the bad thing he did because um, he's a good athlete. That's, uh... So problematic. And then lastly we have the criminal who is Bender played by Judd Nelson in probably his most iconic role. That's kind of what I'm going for with this. And he it walks into the library. We don't see him have any, any, any interaction whatsoever with being dropped off. It's assumed that he walked there because at the end of the film um, he's walking across the field by himself. So. Uh, we're introduced then to the principal who wants them to write a paper uh, telling them, or telling him who they think they are. That made sense. I'm going to go with it. And throughout the rest of the film, uh, the characters kind of get to know each other. As you can imagine, five teenagers being stuck in the library all day. That's going to happen, right? And it's kind of amazing because it starts off really quiet. They're not really talking to one another. And... 
there's a lot of body language going on, and it expresses a lot about the characters, just like how they got dropped off to the detention. And from there, we kind of learn a lot of things about the characters that I'll get into. And I think that's why it resonates so much, you know, 20 years later, 30 years later now. Um, we see the, pin the principal has kind of a power trip, and he's really going after Bender, and the kids kind of bound together and try to get him to knock off his craziness and to get less detentions, and he ends up having like eight detentions by the end of this film. But we'll get more into that later, because th that's one of the parts that bothers me. Um, we see Ali Sheedy's character is really quiet, and they kind of get her to come out more, because she does seem to do a lot of things throughout the film that indicate that she wants attention, and she kind of wants to talk about her problems. And it's really, it's really kind of heartbreaking when she does. She discusses them with Andrew, and she's she and Andrew seem to have the most connection. And Jed Ness, Jen Nelson's character, Bender, is totally harassing Molly Ringwald's character, but Molly Ringwald's character is kind of this self-indulgent little prissy prim... Yeah. Um, but you do, you kind of see these kids really playing into the stereotypes they're supposed to represent. And um, you see them, to quote the film, being brainwashed you see us as you want to see us we were brain and we see ourselves the same way we were brainwashed you see these kids are under a lot of pressure particularly like Brian um oh man so <laughs> the kids get high which is kind of crazy and you see like Bender smoking in school which is again crazy that's really weird 80s stuff and I don't know what he specifically got detention for I don't think they explicitly said but um, they go to his locker and it has um, open this locker and you die uh, bad word and it's kind of like whoa how is that graffiti on his locker still and how is he only how is he not have detention for that how does he not been to Suspended for that. That's hate speech. Like he would be in a lot more trouble nowadays for that. Um, Brian, we find out, is in detention because Saturday detention because he brought a gun to school and tried to kill himself. What? I, what? I what? No, no, movie, no. Um, and they kind of talk about pressure. So. Um, Molly Ringwald's character and Emilia Estevez's character kind of talk about the pressure that they're under. Uh, Molly Ringwald from her friends and Emilia Estevez from his coach and his father. And then Brian talks about the pressure he's under from his parents to maintain a good grade point average. And the fact that his failing shop lowered his grade point average to the point where he didn't see any other option. That's so mortifying and unfortunately for all three of those things happens way too often. Kids, of course, are always feeling very pressured. I don't know why I'm wavering around. <laughs> um, kids are always feeling really pressured by their friends. And even in, in this, like, Emilio Estevez uh, does, smokes pot, kind of because of peer pressure. And it stated that uh, he really can't think for himself and he does anything anyone tells him to do. And Allison is kind of a free thinker, and it showed that in so many different ways, um, because she doesn't really have any other, she doesn't really have any friends, and so that allows her to think for herself, and she, she seems kind of like the strongest character, which is sad. <laughs> um, and the kids discuss at one point, you know, they don't want to become their parents, and Allison, who is Ali Sheedy's character, says that it's inevitable, um, because when you grow up, your heart dies just kind of become your parents. That's so depressing. And I think for a lot of teenagers, like, you don't want to be your parents. And we also get a glimpse into Bender, um, Jed Nelson character, home life, and it is really violent. And to me, it just seems like um, he expresses how violent and tumultuous his home life is, and then he kind of flips out and runs off and is really depressed and angry. And it, to me, it seems like the school has just completely let this kid down and uh, later he gets in trouble again and uh, the principal locks him in the closet what and then he kind of threatens him 
and you know tells him to hit him and calls him a uh, I can't repeat what he called him, but he basically calls him a chicken for not doing so. Is that uh, the, the principal locked him and a, himself and a student in a closet and threatened him? And this is just okay. What, Moby? No, that's that's like the, one of the biggest things I have a problem with. That's just so crazy. It's just so crazy. And I'll probably talk more about crazy principles in my Ferris Bueller's Day review, but that's something that doesn't hold up. That's mortifying. I would be sobbing if that happened to me. <laughs> um, oh, God. It's, it, uh, it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. And uh, the principle is just really horrible. And there's no, like, reconcile for that. You know what I mean? Like, there's no justice. Like, I kind of wish this was pump up the volume because then they would take the principle down. Like, I, I need there to be a sequel to this. I never thought I'd say those words. I mean, I don't actually want there to be, but if there were a sequel to this, like an after credits, yes, even better. I just want an after credits. I want them to band together and take down the evil principle. <laughs> That's all I want. Just like a, like a two minute short of them coming together on Monday and taking down the principal. And that's another thing they discuss, um, is during the detention, Brian asks, on Monday, when we go back to school, are we gonna be friends? And that's kind of how the pressure thing got, um, came up. And uh, Molly Ringwald's character says, no, we're not gonna be friends on Monday. Um, I mean, just think about it. When you walk by, we might wave, and then we'll have to lie to our friends and knock you down so that we don't look bad. <sighs> Don't do that. And, oh man, it, it kills me, like, 30 years later. Like, that's still so high school. That's still so painfully high school. Um, the other thing I had a problem with, and again, this, like, I had two problems with this movie. The first being the principal, and that nothing bad happened to him. And the other thing I had a problem with is, at the end, Claire, Molly Ringwald's character, gives Allison, Alishidi's character, a makeover. And she goes from being kind of the goth girl to this pretty girl. And then Andrew... It's all swoon. If you don't like the girl when she's dressed like this, you don't deserve the girl when she's dressed like this. Because nothing changed here. All right? Movie. Um, but overall, I mean, yeah, Judd Nesson's character is such a little D-bag to Molly Ringwald's character. Um, but I mean, he's not really acting any way that a lot of teenage boys act, particularly given like his home life situation. It's like, okay, I can see why he's a little prick. Um, I, I think the biggest character that I, like, in high school, like I said, I related to Ali Shidi's character, the best case, the most. Um, I wanted to be Judd Nelson's criminal, but overall, I think the most endearing character by far is Anthony Michael Hall's character. And, uh, I kind of want to close it with... Um, you know, each of these kids is really fitting into the stereotype, but then they kind of realize that I might, outwardly, you might see me as this, but internally, I'm, I am a basket case, I am an athlete, I am a brain, I am a criminal, and I'm a princess. I'm all those things inside. Um, you might look at me and see this, and you might treat me like this, and because of that, I'll think of myself that way, but that's wrong. And I think that's a wonderful lesson and a very truthful one. And so I would say um, this movie totally holds up today and overall has good lessons, despite the two little minor things. Um, yeah, uh, we need a Moon Knight movie. And I'll be doing a whole bunch of other John Hughes films, so please check those out. And um, I kind of want to pimp out my Twitter. Um, pretty funny, 90% of things I post are just random movie, pop culture, um, jokes. So, yeah, have a wonderful day, thank you so much for watching, and bye!